Let's take a look at the Muslim community in America. The numbers of Muslims in America, I'm not even bothered going to get into. I do interviews on this. You call up six people, you get different statistics. But Islam is clearly the third largest religion in, Islam, in America. Muslims are now part of the fabric of society. Go to any major city, go to any town. There are mosques all over the place. I like to say the problem that the Muslim community has is in some Muslim communities there are more mosques than there are Muslims, which says something about ethnic problems in the ummah, you know. But that's an issue that I may get to. Muslims are now part and parcel of the professions in the community. Both my parents have Muslim physicians. It's not because they say, ah, my son goes to the Muslim world, he writes on Islam, we should have a Muslim physician. Far from it. It's because in New York and New Jersey, Muslims are a significant presence. In Jersey City, there are so many Egyptians that, you know, in, in Arabic, um, you have a soft and then the hard G. So you can say Jama or you can say Gama. And the Egyptians refer to it as Gersey City with a hard G. <laughs> I got into a cab in Jersey City and the cab driver had his Quran. And I began, I didn't know how to engage him to indicate that I knew a little something about Islam. So finally I, be, I began to recite the Shahada and I thought we were gonna have an accident. He spun his head around. You know? <laughs> and, and, and then we began to talk about the number of, of sort of not only Muslims, but you know, uh, uh, Egyptian Muslims and, and et cetera in the vicinity. So Muslims are very much there. They're in our universities, they're in our jobs, they're in our society. But the challenge of the Muslim community is where do you go from here? How do you marshal those resources to engage in institution building? How do Muslims build institutions? What do I mean by institutions? I mean institutions that represent Muslim concerns. Muslims need institutions in Washington and nationally that deal with issues like public affairs, the media, political lobbying, etc. So that people have a sense of the significance of the number of Muslims. Otherwise, it's as if the Muslim community is in a closet. Nobody knows they're there. If you are visible, that's what makes people in Washington listen to you. And only that. If you are a visible community, that's what makes the media respond. You call up the media and say, I found what you said about Islam offensive. I saw Jag last night and I didn't like it. They don't care. But you let them know that you're a significant number of people, then they do care. But that kind of monitoring of the media and responding, that kind of monitoring of the political system and responding can only come when you build institutions. The second thing is to train the next generation to move into the professions that allow for this kind of access. And that's happening. We see Muslims in the legal profession, medical profession, but it's going to become more and more important to see Muslims in politics, to see Muslims in communications, it's going to become more and more important to see Muslims not only studying medicine and engineering, but of all things, Islam, and actually getting degrees. I travel around the country, I speak to a lot of Muslim communities, and I meet with graduate students. And I'll just give you two or three stories to give you an idea of some of the problems the community faces. I was talking with one group, and a graduate student was saying to me in a major city, he said, the problem we have is with Sometimes our parents' generation. I said, what's the problem? He said, they live in denial. I said, denial of what? They deny that they've been living in America for 30 years and that they're gonna die in America. And he said, and that has an impact on us in terms of how we define ourselves as Muslims in America. That's one issue. The second issue was of a group, a young group of, of Muslim graduate students in which three of them discovered that they shared something in common and it wasn't Islam. It was the fact that they were having a tremendous problem with their fathers. What was the problem? The three of them had switched out of medical school into Islamic studies. The fathers who were committed Muslims want their kids to be devout Muslims. They want them to be really employed and make big bucks. The idea that their kid was going to leave medical school and get a PhD in Islamic studies was beyond them. You're going to be a professor? Dealing with that reality. But unless the Muslim community develops that side of itself, how can it empower itself? Will the Muslim community always be looking where? Overseas for its understanding and interpretation of Islam? 